picture this. Here I am, living my best life, being my authentic, obnoxious, queer kid self. When you say, you can have your rights and all, but do you always have to be so gay? It's always protest this, history month that. And what's with the whole, yes, queen, house down, boots, ha, ga, 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 limp wrist, hair flick, creme de la creme, even that was a drag race reference. And what's with the whole gender thing? So you're a daydam, or more like a mayhem. But do you have to make a part of your personality to constantly rattle down the plethora of words you keep inventing? I mean, LGBT used to be an acronym, now it's an alphabet. Like, let me pull up a chair, this could take a while. Wow. Bit much? But okay, I hear you. Maybe I should take a seat and reflect why I am this way. Of course, the first thought goes to the child who couldn't express themselves. Flinching at even the hint of attraction to one of the girls in my class, hanging my head in shame while peers were having their firsts. Me, who couldn't look at myself in a mirror because I didn't understand why the world didn't see me the way I saw myself and came to the only conclusion that something was fundamentally wrong with me. Me, who ran out of a classroom crying because the teacher decided to play a game and said for girls to stand on the left and boys to stand on the right and I was left standing alone in the middle. After all the sneers and teases, the names and threats, the stones, figurative and literal, that were thrown at me. Is all this an act? Have I become so loud to drown out the hurt child that is still in me? Have I suffocated that child under layers upon layers of rainbow so we never have to face each other again? Or is this an act of defiance? I survived this and I was shouted from the rooftops because Finding a community was like coming home for the first time, and damn it, there's too many kids that haven't found a home yet. So I've taken on these trades to let others know I am like them. And for myself to know they are like me. Like a not-so-secret code so we mutually don't feel quite so alone. Of course, it is also an acknowledgement of our pride elders who organized, who paved the way, who changed laws, who too many of them lost their lives. So we're here today, they marched so we could strut. And who am I to not at least try and uphold their legacy just because you think it's a farce? Or maybe it all comes down to my misconception that I would finally be free. As I wrung my hands, shook out my shoulders, took a deep breath and swung open those closet doors, taking a liberating stride into the room just to run straight, all queer, into a chest of drawers. And there you are, big smiles, gesturing vaguely at this piece of furniture. Go on, get in. Excuse me. You want me to get into your categorized drawers? You nod vigorously. Just so we're clear, I just came out of there. And you want me to get in here? The nodding intensifies. Can I at least have a look at these drawers before you stuff me into one? The exasperated shrug is good enough for me. So step up and open the top left socks all neatly rolled into pairs of course nothing out of place most people like socks they're comfortable that are kept quiet gaze the ones you don't ask about their partner or how struggles of our community are affecting them folding away their loudness you don't question your image of queerness as a thing reserved for white cis skinny or androgynous looking people 
You don't have to face your personal bias or even address how your behavior may be contributing to their feeling of unsafety. But you can always pull them up and say, I'm not homophobic, I have a gay friend. Just like socks, they give you that warm feeling when you put them on your feet and barely remember they're there as you walk all over them. Got a bit heated. Better close this before anyone gets hurt. Top right. Huh. Brass. Oh, that's the bisexuals. And more recently, the asexuals and other people whose identities are constantly invalidated. Yet, just like brass, they're relevant to a lot of people. But for some reason, we've decided to hide them away and do our darndest to pretend they don't exist. But what if, just for fun, I took the straw and dumped it in the Look at them. Out in the world. Ooh. Middle drawer. Now that's some nice shirts. What is that, satin? So stylish. Like your gay best friend. You know, the one you don't have to treat like a human, more like an accessory or personal shopping assistant at best. But let me take this lovely shirt and crumple it up and toss it over my shoulder for the queer people who don't care about fashion. And let's take this lovely stack of silk shirts and gently place it on top of the dresser for the gay and bi men who love fashion and makeup and hairstyling for their own enjoyment, not to be your arm candy. Bottom left. Did a clown party for up in there. What is that clash of patterns? 80s, neon, leopard print, crusty lashes, broken stilettos. Oh, oh, that's the drag queens. Yeah, you love the drag queens. Oh no, not as an art form. Not as a part of culture deeply rooted in black and Latin ballroom scenes. Not club kids, not as a critique on our racist, sexist, and imperialist society, not as a way for trans non-binary people to express themselves in a safe space or queer people of color to be celebrated. No, you like them as something to holler at. And as they walk past, pull off their wigs and grab their padded bums and call it trendy when you watch them on TV and typical when I do. <sighs> Last one, bottom right. Oh, I didn't need to see that. Can you maybe hide your magazines a bit better? Can I just point out, though, that they all show women together? Yeah, isn't it funny how a kiss between two men can get a publication cancelled, while a kiss between two women can drive up the ratings because one of them gets demonized while the other gets fetishized? On behalf of all queer women, allow me to. Well, that was an experience. Where do I go? You sigh so hard it shakes your entire body and roll your eyes so far back into your head that they circle the room and tap me on my shoulder. So I turn and see the laundry basket. As I stroll over, I see your anxious gaze flickering between the bisexual bras and the crumpled up gay best friend in the corner. I open the lid. Stained barista uniform? Leggings with holes in them? Sweaty gym socks? Some old knickers? That's me? Oh, right. The misfit. Tink close. You know, labels can be really useful to help us define our identities. They're not for you to push on us. I got claustrophobic in the closet and you want to fit me into an even smaller space? Bending and twisting my limbs until they break for your convenience? I'll tell you a secret. Your lovely drawers, they belong in here too. We are all that pebble in your shoe. It tore a hole, your favorite socks and gave you a blister. We are all that bra strap that keeps poking out during a big business meeting. 
until you realize it's not hurting anyone. We had an amazing shirt that just isn't your color. We are reclaiming our names and our intimacies, our pictures and our identities, and we're not troublemakers for pointing out wrongs that have to be put right. But I get it. It's easier to assign blame than to take it. But listen to us as we put ourselves back into the history books, loud or unheard, we are all suffering and resilience. We are art, and our joy isn't a threat. Our existence, not an attack. We are breaking boundaries and binaries for all of us. That includes you. Because the human experience is so complex that categorizing it as anything but colorful would be a disservice. And me, yes, I am that flannel bearing, petition signing, lover of the moon, who follows too many drag artists on social media and who can't quite wrap my head around boycotting a beer because one trans woman drank it and who's seen every documentary on the Stonewall Uprising and who can list an alarming amount of lesbian novels off the top of my head because I hope to one day be on that shelf of queer writers who made a difference as I turn my pain into poetry, my regrets into rhymes, my anger into alliteration, my hopelessness into hymns and that hurt child's wailing into wordplay. You're starting to understand the title of this poem. Drawers, closet, but also drawers as an underwear, which is what I've been comparing queer people to for the last 10 minutes. Maybe I am a bit extra, but that's not the point. What I'm saying is, maybe the question isn't, why am I so gay? Maybe the question is, why does it make you so uncomfortable. I'll let you sit with that while I take out the laundry.